Hello there, my fellow loyal battle brothers, and welcome to your weekly dose of Space Marine Chapters lore. Today we will resume our regular weekly schedule from this series by talking about a chapter that is as loyal and as honorable as they come. They are known as the Howling Griffons, and I will be covering them over two or three episodes. As always, when we start a new chapter, today we are going to learn about their history and their campaigns. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us see who these fellows are, shall we? The Howling Griffons is a loyalist space marine chapter founded in the 33rd millennium, from the gene seed of the mighty Ultramarines. They are staunch traditionalists among their fellow Astartes, who consider themselves, first and foremost, to be the defenders of the Imperium of Man and an instrument of the Emperor's will. Their exact origins remain lost in the shadowed wars of the 33rd millennium, but what is known is that they've always been a highly active chapter. While the tragedy of the Horus Heresy had been ended, there were many other threats to the Imperium security at the time. There may have been a specific need for additional Space Marine forces associated with this founding, but that need has been lost to the ages. Few Space Marine chapters can boast of such extensive campaigning hours as the Howling Griffons. This chapter is famous for having been at the forefront of a great many battles and campaigns throughout Imperial history. They are also justly proud of their ability to engage almost continuously in conflict and successfully fight in the most bitterly contested campaigns. Due to the Howling Griffon's glorious record, they have gained the right and title from the High Lords of Terra to recruit their initiates from several worlds, in order to sustain a high level of induction and combat the continuous attrition in the chapter's ranks. Since the time of its founding, the chapter has almost constantly been engaged in at least one campaign, and often divides its companies so that its battle brothers may be committed to multiple war zones. In spite of accepting this challenge, their degree of success and unwavering courage has garnered them a very high reputation. Without a degree of competency and a tremendous amount of devotion to the Imperium, it would be impossible for any chapter to assemble such a role of honor. These successes have come against a wide variety of foes as well. Against the forces of the Immaterium, the Howling Griffins have played a key role in overcoming several Black Crusades brought forth by Abaddon the Despoiler. The entirety of the chapter's forces united on Gunner Dark to overcome an orc threat, preserving the efforts of that campaign. The chapter even stopped the Necrotex of Naf to end their small empire during the Plague of Unbelief. However, a dark shadow has fallen over the Howling Griffin's otherwise glorious history. The chapter maintains a long-standing bloody vendetta against the foul entity who would become the demon prince Pericletor the Forsworn, and the word-bearer's traitor legion from which this vile creature sprang. For millennia, the Howling Griffins have pursued Pericletor's mixed warband of word-bearers and night lords, who were responsible for the death of the Howling Griffins' former chapter master, but more details on that in a moment. Next, I would like to tell you about several notable campaigns that they took part in. The Arios Point Massacre For much of their history, the Howling Griffins have regarded the treacherous word bearers as their greatest enemy. The precise origin of this specific conflict with the heretics is unclear. Throughout the chapter's early history, there were countless incidents of assaults against this traitor legion. It was at a massacre at Arios Point in 220 M38 that finally pushed the Howling Griffins far beyond the tipping point in their lust for vengeance against the word bearers. The chapter master at the time was Orlando Furioso. He was traveling aboard one of the chapter's battle barges along with the 8th company and much of the veteran 1st company. 
They were en route to the chapter's homeworld of Mancora to celebrate the 5,000th anniversary of the chapter's founding. When the battle barge stopped in the Arios point system to resupply, the Chaos Lord Periclitor the Forsworn led a combined force of wordbearers and night lords in ambush against the loyalists. The Howling Griffins were caught tragically unprepared for battle against so overwhelming an enemy force. In short order, their ancient vessel was destroyed after a brutal boarding action. The surviving space marines made landfall aboard their Thunderhawks on the surface of the nearby world of Arios Quintus. The barren world offered little protection to the outnumbered members of the Howling Griffins, however. Soon, those who survived the destruction of their battle barge were overwhelmed by the coordinated assault of the traitor legionaries. No one was left alive, and the chaotic forces seized much of the chapter's war gear, including precious and virtually irreplaceable gear that had been the province of the First Company and the chapter master's honor guard. The bodies of the slain were desecrated and their gene seed was destroyed or stolen. The only body recovered by the chapter was that of Chapter Master Furioso. The traitors mounted it upon a Thunderhawk and left it in orbit of Arios Quintus, as a sign to any who might see it. Many months later, other members of the Howling Griffins tracked down the missing starship and company and recovered the Chapter Master's body and gene seed. After this tragedy, all members of the Howling Griffins swore an oath of vengeance against the Wordbearers and specifically Periclitor, who eventually ascended to become a demon prince. As each new member is recruited, the oath is recited once again. The Denar IV Suppression This was an imperial military campaign carried out by the Howling Griffins against the Chaos Cultists on the agri-world of Denar IV in 109 M40. During their long search for the Wordbearers Chaos Space Marine Warband of Declamus the Vaunted, the Howling Griffin's third company, under Captain Penvav Joachim, responded to a planetary distress call from the world of Denar IV in the Sangramentia sector. This important supply world for the sector had succumbed to rot from within, as the worship of the ruinous powers took root amid its flenser cults and cult clans. As the Howling Griffins descended on Denar IV, they only found a handful of its city-states holding out against a horde of chaos cultists and demon-possessed madmen, their walls packed with refugees fleeing the tide of mass murder that had engulfed the planet. Vastly outnumbered, the Howling Griffins deployed to the savanna, and wielding their superiority in armor and air power to stay mobile and spearhead assaults against the heretics, smashed the cult forces in many great sweeps, before driving onwards to relieve the city sieges. The loyalist inhabitants of Denar greeted the Howling Griffins as divinely sent saviors, and gladly rallied to them in liberating their world from the dark forces that assailed it, selling their lives alongside the space marines. The remaining campaign was bloody and ruthless, ever afterward casting a nightmarish pall over the memory of Denar's people. Since the victory, the Howling Griffins have maintained a lasting oath to protect the planet, and the memory of the many martyred there for their loyalty to the Emperor. While the people of Denar IV have kept faith with their saviors in providing them with the pick of their youth as chapter recruits. The Valerian Purges This was a conflict where the Howling Griffins fought alongside the Imperial Guard 108th Cadian Regiment, the Wyverns. The Liberation of Vanqualis the world of Vanqualis was under attack by orcs when the Howling Griffins and the Imperial Guard's 901st Penal Legion defeated the Greenskin Tide. Shortly after landing, the Howling Griffins turned on the Renegade Soul Drinkers chapter, believing them to be the bearers of a chaos artifact known as the Black Chalice. The Joran Retaliation the Joran Retaliation was an imperial campaign prosecuted by the Howling Griffins against the treachery of General Joran of the 15th Heraclon Ironclad's Imperial Guard Battle Group. 
This entire Imperial task force should have been on its way to reinforce the lines of the Gothic War, but instead turned traitor in 109M41, and slaughtered their commissariat representatives. The Imperium moved to act with decisive force as the foul taint of the Xenos, known as the Dark Eldar, was found to be the root of the problem. Joran and his personal cadre were laid low and corrupted by addiction to the alien's foul psychotropics and depraved practices, thanks to the dark arts of the Cabal of the Crimson Libation. The humans were no more than disposable tools used by the Dark Eldar, to enslave planetary populations by treachery and force, with little risk to the aliens themselves. This could not remain unpunished, and the retaliation force the Imperium launched in 143M41 was fully intended to smash the Heraclons and their dark allies with brutal and overwhelming power. The combined task force was comprised of the Howling Griffins chapter, then about eight companies in effective strength, who were given overall command of the campaign, and reinforced with supporting companies from the Ultramarines and the Sons of Orar chapters. The traitor guardsmen were intercepted as they made planetfall on the farewell world of Asturia. Caught unprepared for such a fierce counter-assault, thousands of guardsmen died in the first hour of the ferocious space marine attack, torn apart on their landing zones with much of their heavy armor yet to be deployed. Confronting not only the elite guard of General Joran's Ogren cadre, but also the inhumanly life and cruel forms of the Dark Eldar that rose around him, the Howling Griffins dispatched them with bolter and fire, and unshakable resolve. It was Chaplain Armand Titus who fought his way to the traitor general and delivered the Emperor's judgment, despite suffering grievous wounds in the process. He would later be enshrined with all due reverence within a dreadnought sarcophagus, in order to continue his service to the chapter. The morale of the traitors collapsed with the death of their leader, and the swift desertion of their foul Xenos allies. The disordered and panicking Heraclons were ruthlessly hunted down and slain in the aftermath. The Badab War the Howling Griffins were assigned to convoy duty during the Badab War, allowing the Red Scorpions and the Firehawks to return to their normal duty. The Karadriad Sector Shortly before the Badab War, the Howling Griffins' 4th Company, as well as parts of their 6th, 10th and 1st Companies, carried out a lengthy search-and-destroy campaign within the Karadriad Sector. It can be safely assumed that a large number of planetary assaults were carried out during this action, as the Howling Griffins were severely lacking in Thunderhawks and Drop Pods when answering the call for aid in the Badab War, as they did not have the time to return to Mancora and resupply their stocks of material. The Siege of the Fenris System The Howling Griffins were one of the twelve chapters of the Adeptus Astartes, to accompany the Dark Angels during the Siege of the Fenris System by the Thousand Suns Traitor Legion of Magnus the Red. The 13th Black Crusade During the 13th Black Crusade, the Howling Griffins sent eight companies to the Imperial Defense. The first company of the Howling Griffins, including Chapter Master Alvaro, were based on the battle barge Force of Destiny and were engaged in the persecution of a particularly nasty company of Night Lords Chaos Space Marines known as the Chosen, commanded once again by that infamous asshole, Demon Prince Pericletor. The Assault on Amistel Majoris Seven of the eight companies dispatched by the Howling Griffins to serve in the Imperial Defense during the 13th Black Crusade became engaged in a grueling trench war on Amistel Majoris. Having broken through the Death Guard plague fleet blockading the world, the companies arrived just in time to bolster the Imperial Guard defenses of the Drukian Fenguard who were suffering horrific losses to the hell-spawned epidemics unleashed by the traitor forces arrayed against them. 
Within days, the Howling Griffins and the Legio Astorum Titans were the only forces able to man the extensive defenses constructed by the Drukians. Any warrior caught in the open and not protected by power armor when the plague winds hit were ensured an excruciating death and an eternity of servitude as a plague zombie in Nurgle's legions of the damned. The Iron Knights sent their elite first company to help bolster the flagging defenses of the Howling Griffins as they fought a grueling war against the unremitting assaults of the Plague Marines of the Death Guard Traitor Legion. The war zone soon became a plague-ridden quagmire, the decomposing bodies of the Plague God's victims forming putrid sucking swamps through which the defenders were forced to march in order to bring battle to the foe. And that, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Howling Griffins for today. Are these guys among your favorite chapters? What do you like about them? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor protects.